Eric Lands, and I'm an SDK engineer with Embrace. At Embrace, we help mobile companies solve their most difficult production issues. In doing that work, we also uncover some incredibly interesting bugs with the mobile operating systems that our applications are deployed on. In this series, we're going to choose some of those bugs and record a longer video about each one, explaining how we found it, what the impact is on your application, and what you can do to prevent it from happening to you. Let's get started. For the first bug, we're going to look at blank web views. So this is a screenshot from one of our customers' applications. As you can see, where there should be content in those web views, it's just a white screen. I'm sure you've had this happen in your own applications and can probably guess at reasons why this could happen to you. you know, maybe the JavaScript didn't load. Maybe the CSS isn't set up right. You know, There could be a number of reasons why this happened. But in this customer's case, the root cause is much more interesting. So to understand it, first we have to talk about the, product, the process model that iOS applications run under. On iOS, most applications have one and only one process. You have a main thread, and you can spawn other threads to do background work, like networking tasks or rendering. But on the whole, your application is running in a single process. This allows the operating system to better manage resources. If your application is using too much memory, your application can be suspended or terminated to free up resources for other applications on the system. This changes when you introduce WebKit into your app. WK WebView actually uses a multi-process model to render its pages, just like the real Safari app does on, the, on your desktop. Each tab or each page of WK WebView, each instance in your application, is backed by two additional processes, a content process and a networking process. So if you have an application with one WebView in it, your application is actually running on three operating system processes, the application process, the web content process, and the web networking process. All three of those processes can be independently suspended or terminated depending on what's going on. So for example, if you have a web view in your app that is running a lot of JavaScript, loading a lot of heavy images, or doing heavy processing, that process can be killed independent of your application process. What this means is your user could be using your application to check out items from your store or, or read comments on a forum, and all of a sudden, all of those comments or all of those items just poof and disappear. This can be incredibly frustrating for your users as it doesn't crash your application. To your user, it looks like your app is still running, but the content just disappeared. This is kind of the worst case scenario. So how can you avoid this? Well, luckily, Apple thought about this and did provide an API. On WK WebView, you should implement the navigation delegate, WK navigation delegate. This delegate provides a series of callbacks that can help you manage what's going on with the content on that page. You'll know when the load started, when the load stopped. You'll know if your user clicks any links on the page. But there's an extra method on here that you probably have never looked at or implemented, and that is web content process did terminate. If you implement that callback, the system will tell you when the content process of any of your web views is killed, and you'll have a chance to react to that event. Some cases, you may just hide that web view. If it's an advertisement or something, it might be better just to get it out of the way because you're not going to be able to fix that yourself. But if it's your storefront or your, your checkout page, you can reload the page because chances are your user was trying to do something and would like to continue doing their work. So if you just reload that page, they can keep going. And often that is the best solution. Uh, so I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you learned a lot about this bug and how you can prevent it in your own application. Um, I'd invite everyone to comment below if they've had any interesting bugs that they want to talk about or bugs that were maybe especially difficult to figure out or understand. I would love to learn about those, and maybe we can include them in a series in the future. Well, thank you very much. Again, I'm Eric Lance, an SDK engineer with Embrace. Have a great day. Yeah.